Welcome and be inspired with Dominic. And today we're going to make this, well, let's call it a flask, but actually it's a piggy bank. It's a quick project on the lathe and it involves some wood burning. I didn't say good wood burning. Let me show you how I made it. I start with this block of what I think might be basswood. I put it between the centers of my lathe where I turn it around. While I do that, let me give you a little bit of background. I hope I recorded enough footage so I do not have to slow it down while I tell you uh, wasting footage here. So here it goes. This project was not just unplanned, but also had to be finished rather urgently. A friend contacted me and asked whether I could make this and he needed it by the next day. In effect this took me a total of 3 hours from start to finish and it would not have been possible without the lathe. Seriously, because I'm turning this. A lathe or a modified drill press is mandatory for that. I digress. Again. And before I tell you that something came up and my friend did not need it until a few days later after all, so I could have taken my time, I transfer it to the screw chuck so I can hollow it out. This is going to be a coin bank for a specific size of coin, which I based this Forsten a bit upon. I drill this as deep as I can. Then I switch to the largest spade bit that I have, which happens to be slightly smaller. Before I shape the outside, I try to hollow out the inside a little bit more. The only tool I dare use for that, especially with so little space to work in, is this carbide insert hollower from Easywood Tools. They are not a sponsor of this show, although I wouldn't mind that. It started out a little frustrating, but in my experience, these tools do not catch as bad as I have managed to catch with traditional ones. After a few meditative breaths, I managed to find how I need to insert the tool slowly and carefully, which is probably not much of a surprise. It is a lot about feeling your way along. The best way I've found is to put the turning tool just a little bit into the spade bit hole, then drag it over the step in order to remove material. And the best and largely only indicator that you're actually turning something is that the hole fills with sawdust, which I recommend removing every now and then. Once I was satisfied that this hollow form would willingly hold at least a couple of those coins, I switched to the outside. For some strange reason my gouge kept walking away from me, but I managed to shape it somewhat flask-like. Actually, I meant to go for some laboratory-style glassware design, which I think I did not quite hit. Well, come to think of it, it was my intention to hint at that all along while not turning myself into a corner, obviously. This is meant to serve as a money drop for a coffee maker. It will sit next to it in an office and whenever someone gets a coffee they feed it a coin. So I first sketch and then burn a coin with the proper denomination on it and a hot cup of look at that fancy wood burning. It is always good to have an iron in the fire and mine is an old soldering iron. Not the best tool for the job but after all I do not want my tools to outshine me. Did I really just say that? Sandpaper removes the pencil lines and for finish I go to my go-to, beeswax. I have discovered that the rag I use to buff it out is so full of that stuff that I do not even need to add extra. So at least I'm not the only one in this shop who's full of it. A good dose of friction melts the wax into the wood and some buffing gives it that nice natural shine. But it is not a piggy bank yet. Frankly, it's not even a good turning because I left the inside raw. But then again, the coins won't mind and I was in a hurry. For the plug, I chucked up a piece of walnut, turned it plug like and tested the fit. By testing the fit, I mean I held the flask against it to see where I got burn marks. This certainly lacks style and is not ideal on top of that, but it gives me a good idea where I need to remove a little more. After finishing the plug with wax as well, I part it off and head over to the drill press. There I drill two holes at the ends of an imaginary slot that will accept the designated coin, plus a little wiggle room. To connect the holes I use the scroll saw, but a fret saw would probably work just as well. After finessing the hole with the file, I finish the rest of the plug using hot air and the same rag as before. 
I could probably have sanded the top of it down a little better, but I wanted some texture on it. And that's the finished piece. It's a quick project. I could probably improve on a couple of things. For starters, this fit here is uh, rather haphazard and me putting this on to see where it, where it burns actually is probably not the most elegant solution, but it works. I did manage to hollow it out way more than I anticipated to be able to, but you can actually see that the, the screw chuck went through or rather the, the spade bit touched the screw chuck, but it worked all right. And I might put some felt down here and say it's intentional. At the very least, 50 cent coins won't go through there. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you did, please share this video and let me know down in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching and as always, remember to be inspired.